Okay, this is the video for integration by parts. And we're going to learn how to develop the formula for integration by parts, basically starting with the product rule from when we did derivatives. So when we took when we had a derivative and we had u times v, so we were taking the derivative of a product, then our rule gave us u dv plus v du. So using this rule, we're going to do some integrating and rearranging, and we're going to figure out a sort of product rule for how to integrate. So I'm going to start off by integrating all the parts of this formula. And since we're integrating right here a derivative, and integration and derivatives are basically opposite operations, that's going to leave me with uv, because these will cancel, equals the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. Now, I'm going to um, subtract this integral v du to the other side, and that's going to leave me with u times v minus the integral of v du equals the integral of u dv. And this is the integration by parts formula, although when we look at it, we're going to start with this side and we're going to use this part of the formula to be our process. <clears throat> so what it's going to look like is we need to do the integral of u dv, which will give us u times v minus the integral of v du. Pardon my dog's toenails in the background. So if I'm trying to find the integral of u dv, then I have to look at this part here and I have to decide what in this problem is going to be u and what in this problem is going to be v, I mean dv. So I need some part of it to be u and I need some part of it to be dv. So let's see. I'm going to let x be u and I'm going to let sine x dx be dv. Now the dx is always going to go with the dv section. But the reason that I picked x for u is because since we know u, we're going to find its derivative, which is 1 dx. And since we know dv, we're going to find its integral. And when you integrate sine, you get negative cosine. Okay? So now that I have these four things, all I have to do is plug in. What's my u? What's my v? What's my v? What's my du? So here we go. Let's plug this in. So the integral of x sine x dx is going to be u, which is x, times v, which is negative cosine x, minus the integral of u, I'm sorry, v, I mean, negative cosine x du, which is 1 dx. Okay, so we did uv minus v du. Notice that the dv has totally been left out now. So what, this do, what does this do for us? Well, I have negative x cosine x. And if I bring this negative out, it's going to be plus. And I'm integrating cosine x dx. And that is something that we know how to integrate. Cosine becomes sine. And then I put a plus c on the end. And now I have an answer. What is the integral of x sine x dx? It is negative x cosine x plus sine x plus c. So we've taken something that was initially a product, and we've actually been able to integrate it, even though we weren't able to do that before. Okay, so let's look at another example. Uh, in this problem, I have x squared sine x dx, which is going to look very similar to what we had before, but I want to show you something else that can sometimes happen with integration by parts. So I'm still going to start with my same process, that I need a u and I need a dv, and it has to come from here. So I'm almost always going to let any polynomial like x or x squared or x to the third be u. And the reason for that is because when I take the derivative, it makes it a simpler problem. 2x is a lower um, exponent than x squared. So what I've done is I've actually taken it down a notch. Whereas with dv, we're hoping that the other part that's not a polynomial first of all, will be easy to integrate, and then second of all, uh, will be something that helps us for the next step of integrating. 
So if my dv is sine x dx, then when I integrate sine, I get negative cosine x. And this should all look pretty familiar. We just did this in the previous problem. Okay, so now I'm going to do u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so if I simplify this a little bit, I have negative x squared cosine x plus, if I make this plus, um, the integral of 2x cosine x dx. So a lot of things have been helped because we went from x squared to now in this part of the problem we have 2x. But notice we still have two functions, 2x and cosine x. So it's still a product. So what does that mean? Well, you may be guessing it right now. That means we have to do this again. <clears throat> this time my u and my dv have to come from here because this is the part that is still an integral. So again, my u is going to be the part that's polynomial. And I, I have it as 2x, but keep in mind that we could have taken the 2 out here and then we wouldn't have worried about it. But I'll show you in just a second why I tend to not take that out. So I'm going to have 2x be my u and my dv will be cosine x dx. And so du will be the derivative of 2x, which is 2dx. And v will be the integral of cosine x, which is sine x. And now we're going to go <clears throat> back into our problem. So what I had was negative x squared cosine x plus and to solve the, this integral right here, we're going to do u times v minus the integral of v du. So you can see now this two we can bring out. We can integrate sine, and so now we can get an answer. So my final answer is going to be negative x squared cosine x plus 2x sine x minus 2, and when you integrate sine, you get negative cosine x, and then we have plus c. So this is the integral of x squared sine x dx. Okay, if I would taken my 2 out up here, then what would have happened is it would have been left here and we would have had to distribute it. And that's not a big deal. But I prefer not to have to do that because sometimes you can, it's really easy to skip a step that way. So that's why I don't usually do that. All right, let's look at another one. We've talked about before, or I've talked about before, that you cannot integrate ln. Well, you still can't. So what we're going to do is we're going to take ln x and the dx, and we're going to make this like it's a product. So we're going to say u is ln x, dv is dx. If I take the derivative of ln x, it's 1 over x dx. If I integrate dv and get v, dx becomes x. <clears throat> so if i got to plug this in, then the integral of ln x dx is u, which is ln x, times v, which is x, minus the integral of v, which is x, times du, which is 1 over x, dx. How nice is that? So you see what's going to happen? My x's are going to cancel. So what's my final answer going to be? I'm going to have x ln x minus, this part's gone, so I'm just integrating the dx, which is just x, put in my plus c, and there's my integration for ln x. Now it doesn't, it didn't integrate directly. We had to integrate it with integration by parts. But now that you see what it is, if you are interested in memorizing it, you can, because that is the integration for ln x. <laughs> All right, one more type of problem that I want to show you. Um, on example two that we did just a moment ago, we had to do two steps of the integration by parts. We had to find u, we had to find dv, we had to go through the whole process, then we had to find another u and another dv and go through the whole process. So there is this method called the tabular method, 
And it doesn't work all the time, but it does work for problems like this, where one of your parts is a polynomial, and the other is something like e to the x, which repeats itself. And here's what I mean by this. <clears throat> if you set up the tabular method, the first column is going to be the plus minus column, the middle column is going to be the u column, and the third column is going to be the dv column. So when I look at my problem, I'm going to have x squared be u, because that's usually what we do. We let x squared or any polynomial be the u part, and I'm going to let e to the x dx be my dv part. Okay? And in my plus minus column, the first term will be plus, the next term will be minus, then plus, then minus. I don't know how many of these I'm going to have. I'm just going to stop there for now. So how do we know what to do with this? Well, we know in this one we're taking derivatives. So I'm going to take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 2 is 0. Once I get to this 0, then I know to stop. So then I'm going to come over to my dv column. In the dv column, we're integrating things. So e to the x dx is going to integrate to become, well, what do you know? It's e to the x. And if we integrate e to the x again, it's still e to the x. And if we integrate it again, it's still in e to the x. And so you see what I mean by we want our dv to be something that tends to repeat itself. Sine and cosine also work well for this column because sine and cosine switch back and forth for each other's derivatives. So once we've set this up, the tabular method works like this. I love this for some reason. I just love this. You go across and, and diagonal, across and diagonal, across and diagonal. So you're skipping this first term, which remember is dv. Now remember, if we go back a little bit, remember how I showed you in example one that we were leaving out that dv term? Well, now that we're doing the tabular method, you can see again we're leaving that first dv term out, okay? It's not there. So what does this tell me? <clears throat> well, here's this is totally my answer. We have positive x squared times e to the x minus 2x ex plus 2 e to the x. The 0 is where we stopped. So we're done with that part of the problem. So we put a plus c on the end, and we're done. That's our integration. So I have x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus c is my solution. If you have ever seen the movie Stand and Deliver, there's a part in the movie where he does this exact process, and that's what he's talking about. That's how you do integration by parts with the tabular method. Okay, that's it.